Hey guys, have you ever wondered how they engrave images onto a piece of granite or marble the correct way? Today I'm going to be showing you how to engrave with a CO2 laser and it is a lot more simple than you think it is. I'm going to show you a very quick way to do it, so stick around and I'll show you how. So guys, first thing we need to do is have a look at our artwork on Artworks. Now, the image on the left is our outcome and the image on our right is the one that we imported and it is just plain grayscaled artwork. So what we need to do is turn our image into something that has lots of dots and shading. So in order to get that right, follow along and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so first thing we need to do is click on our image. Doesn't really matter how big it is, what the size is, we'll change that towards the end. We now need to convert this into a bitmap if it isn't already. So we go ahead and we just need to click on the bitmap handle. Using the Arduwork for process pictures, we're going to say no because we want it to convert into a bitmap. Then we are presented with the screen over here with a whole bunch of options. First thing we need to do is select set output resolution. Now normally you can set this to 300 which should be more than enough or you can go as far as 1000. Today I'm going to be using 1000 because I want the resolution to be quite good and I need those um, dots per inch to be very small so we can actually create our shadowed or uh, depth of field on the image itself. So once we've gone ahead and done that we need to now select Ditha. Now, if you don't know what Ditha means, Ditha means that it's taking an artwork and creating noise, white noise in particular, so that we only have one layer, not multiple layers, so we're only working with white and black. Now, what that means is, depending on how much frequency we add, which we're going to click on the net graphic, and then we see we have a frequency lines per inch, now that is all down to how small those dots are going to be and that is what's going to create our depth of field. So if we go ahead here and we select um, let's say 300 and we go and we say apply to view and we're going to have to wait a few seconds because it takes a bit to convert it. So once that's done well then we can zoom in. Okay all right so now you can have a look you can see there's a difference between the two images and the one on the left looks slightly darker to the one on the right. So if we go ahead and we zoom in, we can go and see that those dots are really, really small. That detail is a bit too fine. So what we can go do is change the 300 to maybe 50 and we can apply again to view. Wait a few seconds. Basically what we want to do here is try and create where the dot is just big enough uh, to create a depth of field where the laser engraver is not going to be engraving forever and if you zoom out of the image it looks almost identical to the original image that we imported. So if you have a look right now if you look at the two in difference there's not much going on other than the one on the left is slightly darker. Now if it looks like it's blurry or it doesn't look like it's got good depth of field and you can't see the difference between the two then you then you're on the right track if it is blurry pixelated by zooming out you know just to go ahead and change the frequency up or down until you've achieved the correct um, depth of field if you struggle with that just change it up and down that's just my recommendation don't try and go over 300 because then it is going to be too fine and your laser engraver might not work out that will work more for acrylic not for granite. Granite, when you're engraving on granite, it's going to sort of crack the top or chip away the top layer and it doesn't actually engrave away like wood where it's very, very precise. So you want to try and keep a happy medium between good quality but also not bad quality. So somewhere in the middle. Acrylic will need very fine detail. So I recommend going over 300 for acrylic then you get very, very good detail. Another thing for acrylic, you want to try and invert the color because you are going to be engraving on the back side. Here we're engraving on the top. So once you're happy with that image 
and you can see it's working quite well and you're happy with the size of the dots and I'm zooming in just so you can see it we can go ahead and push OK. Now that that's done we can zoom into our image here on the screen and we can see all those dots and we can see the depth of field quite well and we've got a really good resolution and this should work quite well. Now the only thing we need to do from here is just go and change the size so we're going to go ahead click on it and we're going to change this to around about an A4 size so the width will be around 210 millimeters by 270 which is perfect we'll leave that there and now all we need to do is go ahead and change our settings and that is the settings of our power and speed for engraving now the slower your speed obviously is going to mean that this is going to take quite a long time so anything under 100 is going to be very slow this may take over an hour to engrave but we want good quality but we also don't want to absolutely destroy the surface of the granite so we can't go too much power but we can't go too slow because then it'll crack more than it should we only want to get the top layer we don't want to go deeper if you go too deep on granite or marble you'll end up ruining it and you cannot see the depth of field so we're going to go to 300 speed which is a very good speed uh, maximum is 700 on this machine we want to keep it a scan because we can't do cutting with a bitmap so keep that in mind the blowing yes we want it on and my power I'm going to go with 65 because anything above that I feel will start damaging our granite and you will not get the results you're looking for so we go ahead and we push OK and now all we need to do is save to a memory stick and we're good to go now guys the only difficult part here was actually changing the settings of the dots per inch on frequency to make sure that our depth of field is correct and that is it very simple process so from here we are going straight to our laser machine to do the rest Well, hold on now this is clearly not worked so I've gone ahead and stopped this particular one so we stopped it and we realized that there wasn't enough detail being transferred to the granite itself and with looking at this particular image there's a lot more darker areas to the image than there are white areas and that was playing a big issue on this granite because the granite itself when you engrave it it has a light background but the top surface is dark so you have to kind of think in the opposite way so from that we went and inverted the image and then after that we did a few smaller tests and eventually we came down to brightening the image because there's too much black in it and then it allowed more depth and a lot more contrast to be seen because there's more light areas and less dark areas so from that we went in inverted it and i changed the frequency from around 50 to down to 10 and then i left my pixels per inch at a thousand and by doing so after doing a few more tests we came right this was our first one this was my second one this had too much power i thought maybe power would be a problem then I went and deleted the background in this particular one here and I didn't invert it at this stage and still it didn't give me enough detail. So then we did a third test here where I inverted it and then I started lightening the darker areas and bringing out more detail in his head. And then my final test was this one here and this one is the one I had my frequency at 50 and my dots uh, pixels per inch was at a thousand and obviously inverted and I brightened the area around his face as you can see and that left me with my final result.
So guys, this is our end result here. And I think this is the best outcome for this particular image when it comes to engraving on granite. You have to keep in mind that you have to do many tests depending on the color of granite or marble that you're using. And you may have to invert or leave the image as it is, but you do have to play around until you come right. And once you come right, write down those settings and then you'll know how to do it from there on with it. So, thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And this came out really, really well. So now you can actually do engraving on granite confidently if you go ahead and test. So thank you for watching. marks the 10th anniversary of am.co.za in the South African market. And through that time, we have experienced considerable growth and expansion with the support of our valued customers. To mark our 10th anniversary, we have bought a warehouse at Sunny Rock in East Grand, and we will commence with renovation and construction in 2023. The facility will comprise a massive 2,000 square meter warehouse, 300 square meters of demonstration space, 150 square meters of sales space, and 400 square meters of spare part storage on the top floor. 550 square meters of showroom space on the middle floor. 400 square meters for Machine Dot Africa for machine repairs with its own dedicated entrance. And a 250 square meter tea garden and coffee shop for your convenience. Our group now comprises four businesses. AM.co.za is our main business and supplies the machines, spare parts and consumables. Machine.Africa does the installations for our clients and handles on-site and factory repairs. Ambitious Academy ensures that our clients achieve the very best levels of productivity by providing training and certification. And our automated AI-driven online store, Buy This, brings all products online and distributes countrywide. We invite you to be part of this exciting journey as we establish our new headquarters. Watch as the process unfolds and be part of the adventure to meet all of your machinery and productivity needs with this magnificent new facility. AM.co.za. Achievement matters.